then you've put the, the sample, if you like, into the X-ray machine and you've got all this data. Mm -hmm. How does that look slash manifest itself and then what do you do with it? Okay, so what you end up with is a, a three-dimensional array, uh, a three-dimensional image, if you like, uh, of where each element of the image is a grey level, single variable, uh, and that variable tells you something about the density of a small area of your sample. So it's just like a black and white image, uh, except that instead of measuring the amount of light bouncing off the object you're looking at it, you're effectively estimating the amount of x-rays that went through that point. Yeah. So you're looking at the density? You're or? looking at the density. It's proportional to density. So what we do with it is we have developed techniques uh, based on methods used in visual tracking. Uh, so there are uh, so a large community of people in computer vision who look at time-based video sequences of people, cars, etc., moving through a three-dimensional environment and track them. They identify a person in the first frame of the video and then they track them as they move through and recover their position at each point in the video. Is that a bit like what I might do for an After Effects thing yeah. in, on video? A big motivation for tracking stuff is CCTV if you want to find out where a person is or track a car through a junction and see where they go. The way that we use that sort of technology is we view our three-dimensional stack of densities uh, as a video sequence. We take slices through it uh, and we move from the top of the stack down through to the bottom and as we do that the route gets more complex. So you start off with a single route at the top and then it branches as it goes down and you get a more complicated structure. Uh, so we've developed uh, some tracking techniques that will allow us to take one of our stacks, convert it into a video sequence, have the uh, biologists point at the very top of the stack and say this is where the route begins and then initialize a tracker which then automatically follows the route through, copes with the branching and produces a three-dimensional model of the route by stitching together all the different paths that it sees the route taking. So once you've got that uh, you can create a description of the three-dimensional structure of the route so we, uh, we then go through our data and we uh, pull out uh, branching points and angles between um, uh, between branches and so on and from that we can extract what the biologists call root traits uh, statistical summaries of the properties of a particular root okay? uh, and then we can uh, hand that to the biologists and what they do is they relate that to other experimental things like the genetic structure of the plant or the level of compactness of the soil or the amount of water and where the water is for example because you're not being destructive, you can also then keep an eye on this over time. Yeah, we can. Particularly now that we have the automated facility and we can program it to scan a particular sample every day, two days, whatever. We can rescan the, the sample, resegment it, pull out the structures, match them up and see what the differences are. So we'll be able to study the growth of these things, which you couldn't do before uh, because destructive methods would uh, make that impossible. So we use this for a variety of things. The main focus is on roots. Um, we are uh, looking though at a wide range of biomaterials. Um, we've done things like, we've done some work on leaves, we've done some work for the food industry. Looking to the longer term, really though, the focus is going to be on plants and plant roots. And what we're getting into is more detailed measurements, automatic measurements of uh, the growth of plants. Uh, we're looking at in more, at more detailed measurements of things like the uh, temperature and uh, other effects on the, uh, on the growth of the plant. So we're embedding sensors into the columns that we use so we can measure other stuff. And we also have a, a related uh, facility being built that will allow us to look at the top half of the plant and pull out three-dimensional descriptions of, uh, of plant shoots from sets of normal colour images and hopefully before long we'll have a complete three-dimensional model of a living plant.